Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and a big thank you for clicking on and sticking with me but as usual please remember to share subscribe and like and remember to give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying the content uh, it goes a long 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 way right um, I've got quite a bit well not a lot to go through but enough to go through in this one there's there's been quite a bit over the, the past couple of weeks that have wound me up um, I won't say wound me up just just knock me generally knock me um, we are today is the 1st of October so as usual you'll get these videos a week later um, but all HGV drivers um, should have had their little love letter um, from the government and all the rest of it um, I'll mention some things on that in a minute if I remember I'll either cut it into the video so you can pause it and see what it's all about uh, for them that are non HGV drivers um, or I'll put it up in one of the corners so you can see it right I'm currently parked up having my dinner yep it's on break um, I've got a few notes here that I've actually done on my phone um One of the things that I want, I want to touch on, there's been a leaked document um, from the government and it's regarding Brexit and all the rest of it and it's called Yellow Hammer, right? like the bird Yellow Hammer, um, hence why the thumbnail's covered in all that. Uh, and what it is, this leaked document um, was obviously when people had voted that we want to leave the EU market and all the rest of it. Um, there was lots in there about what would happen if we come out. So your gas shortages, they knew all about that, but chose to do nothing about it. Fuel shortages, they knew all about that, but chose to do nothing about it. Um, the labour shortages, you know, manual labour and all the rest of it, 
the knew all about that but chose to do nothing about it so you, you know from us voting out to actually the leaving date was a long 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 time but yet our government it wasn't under boris's reign don't get me wrong but our government chose not to do anything about it and as i've said about in my previous videos we have a government that is pretty much just suck it up and see well we can all play that i can suck it up and see and that's exactly what i'm doing because they've sent a love letter out to all hgv drivers saying how valued they are and all the rest of it what a lot of bollocks the hours are changing in the jobs and all the rest of it well hang on a minute if they sent me a love letter out and they went to that detail right because i'm not saying it was just a five minute letter which it probably i, I wouldn't even imagine it they got more than five minutes to write that um why didn't they send me a list of jobs of where i can get these jobs with reduced hours and reasonable pay and all the rest of it that's changing in the sector bollocks biggest lord of bollocks i have ever heard it, it, it annoyed me it's really really annoyed me right because as i've said i would have continued to be a class one driver if i wasn't abused and still they choose to do nothing in the public sector for rest areas for drivers decent overnight parking decent facilities do away with cpc you know the list goes on and on and on and on and on for truck drivers and they want to attract the younger generation into it not a chance not a prayer the younger generation is not going to want to be a truck driver when the, everybody is reporting well not everybody a majority of truck drivers are reporting at how crap it is yeah if you want to do more than 56 hours a week and you think you're getting a good wage no hang on a minute think about it properly 56 hours plus a week yeah at ten pound an hour or ten pound twenty five or whatever it is right now yeah it does mount up but when you start a young family and all the rest of it and so on no you you will never get to see that family you'll never get the time or the energy to spend with your partner you won't have the time or the energy to do your hobbies or you go away and sleep in a wagon all week good luck with finding decent facilities oh hang on a minute as i mentioned in one of my videos yeah they don't like the parking in laybys no no most laybys have got no overnight parking and you will be towed away and all the rest of it and then you've got the added extra of having a high value load and your curtains slashed or every chance of being robbed yourself or your diesel robbed at the minute because there's a big diesel shortage the list goes on and on and on and whilst we're on the diesel shortage what is it with selfish people the seed was sown by the fuel industry to get people to panic by to nudge the government into letting them get foreign national drivers back that ain't coming back they're not going to come back now they've got decent facilities and all the rest of it go abroad and have a look at the facilities that they've got for truck drivers and what do you get in britain a lay-by full of piss and shit that's if you're allowed to park in it no not not the nicest thing or or, or if you were like me a black bucket with a bin liner in it yeah because i had a, a, a little bit more thought and courtesy for other people yeah no the, the, the fuel shortage thing i mean i've been to when was it tuesday i went to fill up 
and there were cars filling up on diesel pumps and I watched somebody trying to wrestle the nozzle out of the fuel cap at the, the filling point because they got it stuck. Well, yeah, yeah. Th think on whilst you're doing this because them trucks and the emergency services and all the rest of it that bring vital stuff to you, to your supermarkets and to your home and everything else, now can't deliver it because you've all gone out and panic buyed. Well done. Very clever. You are so, so clever. As I yet say again, again about the selfish society, just think for themselves. And if everybody carried on as normal, then yeah. But, you know, most truck drivers know this and they can see it coming a mile off. But can our government, can they bollocks? No, it, it's just shocking to hear of how the government um, or, or one of the papers have been leaked, Yellow Hammer, uh, and, and through all that that they've listed in it, there wasn't a shortage of truck drivers. They weren't even mentioned. But yet they're writing a letter to everybody that holds a HGV now, begging you to come back. You know, like I say, I'll pop it in somewhere and you can have a good... Them that are not truck drivers can have a read of it. I'll gladly let you have a read of mine. I have no issues whatsoever. But it, it, it's yet a vicious circle. All these truck drivers that have suffered for all these years, right, they want you to do something for them. And I, I know what a percentage of them are going to say. Piss off. Same as me. No. Nope. You've just made the industry so unattractive and so hard, it is unbelievable. I, I spent more than 10 years looking for a job like I've got now. And I still, to this day, say about the job that I have now, right this minute, is the best job I've ever had. It's the best gaffer I've ever had. It's the best warehouse staff I've ever had and the sales team I've ever had. Notice how I mentioned the word team? It's because we all play as a team. And that's what happens with these big companies, is they forget that you're a vile, valuable bum on seat. Oh, and that was something that the government said, uh, 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 or somebody, some commissioner on telly, we need to get bums back on seats. Put a few words either side of that, and it'll sound like something that's been shouted at you or been told by a traffic planner or your transport manager is you're nothing but a bum on a seat. So for them to choose them words, bum on seat, it, no, it's the wrong thing to say at the current time. And this is where they keep cocking things up massively. It, it's just a joke, all of it, it it's just a joke. So, yeah, foreign national drivers, they're not going to come back and things are going to be worse because, because they're not going to come back. So they're going to look further afield for visas and drivers to come here. So you've likes of India and Goa and all that lot. Do they have the same qualifications to drive on the UK British roads? Because we all know how they drive over there. Uh, and yet that's a, another disaster waiting to happen. Um, it, you know, the new test changes that are supposed to be coming in, it's exactly the same as the American test system for HGVs. They have a big, vast land over there where they can turn round wagons and all the rest of it. Most roads in the UK now, God, you, you can't get a wagon down them. So, you know, what's going to happen there? Everybody's christened uh, upcoming new drivers, uh, the Boris disasters. Yeah. And I can sort of get where they're coming from with you. Yes, we want new blood through the door. You ask any truck driver and they say, yeah, we'll, we'll have it all day long. They'd love for it to come through. But the government are not listening to what's going on. They really aren't. You know, you pre-predicted a lot of stuff 
through your yellow hammer leaked document but you chose to do nothing about it the truck drivers weren't even mentioned on it right manual labor not HGV or what is it they're calling it now professional drivers oh we're all professionals now that they really want us don't they yeah no I'm never ever 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 gonna put my bum back on a seat of an Arctic unless you can find me a job that starts no earlier than 7 a.m. and I finish no later than 5 p.m. because in this letter they are advertising oh things are changing in the industry the hours are being reduced the pay is going up and it's a lovely marvelous wonderful career no, oh, you have a long way before you call it that. And until changes are done, anyone that's going for a test and you're told by your examiners or your instructors that you could earn X, Y, Z. No, wait till you see them changes happen and then go for it. That's my advice on it. Wait until you see them because it won't happen because companies are capping wages now and some places are starting to fall you know it's just yet another cock up the government need to get onto the private sector to set standards right and them standards need to be carried right across if you've got to section a part off of a toilet that's in a service station or put facilities up or portable toilets in laybys and things like that then that's what you need to do yeah many a truck drivers are tired and not having valuable own living time you have robbed enough time off them and for what because it doesn't matter how many hours that you do they want to rob the money out of the other hand. That's your UK government, that, isn't it? Yes, mm, really nice. So, yeah, I, I, I really wouldn't go for your HGV one or any of your HGVs until they change the public sector of it all. There is answers to the problems already there. They just need to enforce a few simple little things. And note how I say the word simple. Yeah. They could have done it many years ago, but they chose to do nothing. And they still choose to do nothing. Yeah. Vicious circle vicious circle yeah and that circle has now come back to bite them in the butt so yeah it, 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 it's I, I, I really wouldn't go for your HG at the minute uh, it's confusing times that it is uh, and if they go down the road oh sorry before I carry on um, test examiners are on about going on strike now I don't know whether it's true or not but I've heard a little whisper that they are in talks with unions about going on strike, which will put a halt on HGV drivers yet again. That's another spanner thrown in the works. And it's all because the government don't listen to what's happening in the industry. Yes. The hours that you drive, so what's that? Two tens, three nines. So that there's 47 hours a week just in that, right? And they want all your driving hours off you at 47. So your working hours can be 60 odd and more, right? Come on, I, I, and I don't care whether there's some people say, oh, well, I can't get from A to B and all the rest of it. Well, it's high time companies looked at 
of how to get round them problems right because it can be done you can drop a trailer and meet someone else that can pick it up and go elsewhere with it and so on and blah 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 that's where I was on about separating day drivers distance drivers and trampers using them properly but this country doesn't so yeah um, I don't know that much to come out I'm bloody forgetting where I'm at yeah, they, they, they need to clean it all up, massively, really do. And until them changes happen, so, like I say, with your driving hours, I think that should be your working week, 47 hours a week. The average working week is 45, right? It's supposed to be contracted. Your usual working week is about 48. So... 47 falls in the middle of that so as you've got responsibility of a high load uh, quite a stressful job during the day on the road with the idiots on the road there's plenty of them around at the minute talking of idiots on the road as people forgot how to drive it feels as though that we've come out of lockdown and people have been in hibernation and forgot how to drive we're back to square one of cutting truck drivers up and giving them abuse and all the rest of it and I know it happens if I had to take something off my dash cam and what happened today and well alone today I can I can think of five very near misses today one were that close that bloody someone screamed on the pavement what is it with people what, what, what is it that you want to kill people I, I've seen two fatals this week. Two. That's in close. You know, people have lost people, relatives, friends, family, through stupid driving. What's that all about? And it falls back again to the selfish society. It's a joke. Anyway, driving hours. I think your driving hours. That should be it for a working week for a driver. That is it. End of. More than enough. Or unless you decide to be a tramper. Then you've got a choice then, haven't you? Or you opt out of working more than your driving hours. Because then, as somebody said to me, what was it in the comments? I knew the hours when I got the keys to the truck. Yes, I did. 45. With occasional overtime. Occasional. Not demanded. Two different things there. Occasional overtime. A couple of hours a week. Yeah. I'm fair enough. But not stupid hours. Every day. See what I'm coming at here? Yeah. No, it's not on. Uh, if I had known when I'd have gone for a certain job or a couple of jobs that I was going to do more than 50 odd hours a week I'd have quite easily stood up in the interview and just said can I stop you there please yeah I, I don't want to waste your time as much as you don't want to waste mine but sorry mate it's not for me this one all right see you later bye bye and it's a thing of working at weekends no, I fought long and hard and I found a job I don't work weekends do you know why because it's my time it's family time it's home time it's hobby time it's decorate time it's DIY time it's sit on me arse and scratch me balls time it's my time I have a life outside of work and this is why I'm never going to move from the job I'm in because anything and everything I have ever been asking for has come in one foul swoop why would you move I've got I've got it all now so it goes to show that things like that 
can be done but you as people just don't fight for it yeah if, if I'd have found that jobs like this on the HGV one industry right I wouldn't have moved if they didn't lie to me to get me through the door I probably wouldn't have moved I probably wouldn't have rung the DVLA up and said look I've had a, a, an entitlement on my license it's called C plus E um, I, if I put it in writing can I can I apply to have it removed and I have done this to get my HGV1 removed off my license and they've told me basically unless it's um, a medical or a judge has deemed it to be taken off then I can't get it off so me now as me I, I'm just if anyone sees my license I'm gonna lie out my horse and I'm gonna lie out my horse that I've never driven a class one in the hope that they don't think hmm, we'll get him as a class two driver and then put him as a class one but I shouldn't need to do that now because I've got a decent job a really decent job I've got decent people to work around and it makes a massive difference if you'd have seen me a few years ago before I started all this YouTube stuff as I've mentioned in one of my videos if you've watched them go back and watch through them all um, you know uh, depression that's all I'm going to say on it there's only one of me and I want to enjoy that one of me and my family want to enjoy that one of me and time with me and that's why I stepped away from driving an Arctic like thousands of other class 2 drivers have class 1s and have stepped away from it and an answer to a problem that the government are having why don't you get your van drivers to step up to a seven and a half ton get your seven and a half ton drivers to step up to a class two and if they want to do it class two drivers to step up to a class one yep you have people that already know how the industry works moving up a line which means you start at the bottom of getting people from cars to vans to seven and a half tons to class two to class one you will get a quicker response and a more safer roads by doing that rather than adapting the American wares yeah right yeah uh, I'm, I'm sort of I'm gonna leave it there I've gone through some of my notes here so yeah the the leaked documents yellow hammer um, you'll find it on YouTube somewhere um, but isn't it amazing they they knew all the problems that had happened to this country before they initially did years before and what plans did they put in place for it nothing absolutely naff all because if they had we wouldn't be stuck in the predicament that we are and you can sit there and argue about the pandemic and all the rest of it no not good enough absolute not good enough because they could have put plans in place before the pandemic or whilst the pandemic was happening for a recovery process as they come out of it but did they choose to do it no and that's your government for you the best i still say the best thing that could happen to our government is because they're more interested in things that mean nothing to this country because they don't want to invest in this country they just want to ruin it the best thing that could happen is the queen to sack them all and start again fresh but they've got to come back with value for britain because that's the way that we've got to go now you ain't going to get help from the outside world because yet our government decided to piss all the foreigners off and all the rest of it and it's all right saying yeah 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 it was fine and all the rest of it to do it but just think if the boot was on the other foot 
if you were stuck at bloody Dover or Calais, wanting to come back to Britain, yeah? They're all pissed off because they shafted their Christmas. Oh, they're talking of Christmases before I go. The headlines are coming up again. Boris to save Christmas yet again. Piss off. Do they think he's some kind of wonder child? Boris didn't save the last Christmas. It, it, it probably killed more people than think about it wisely. And why is it the Covid things disappeared all of a sudden? Eh? It, it goes to show this country can't sort anything out. It can't. Because it just makes piss poor decisions. Instead of thinking what's outside the box, let's have a look what's in the box and sort that out first. And then we can sort outside the box. Right, I'm going to leave it there, otherwise I'm going to ramble on and on and on and on and on. I'm trying to keep the videos a bit shorter because they're getting stupidly long. Or unless you like that, let me know if you like it or not. Um, but yeah, as usual, please share, like, subscribe, click thumbs up whether you like the content. You seem to be forgetting that. It, it helps me uh, on an insight to everything. And comments as well. Give me them comments. Subscribe. Come on, push me up there. I want to get up. Subscribe. I'll keep the content coming. If you subscribe, if you don't, then I'm not. Um, but yeah, no, a big thank you to everyone. A real big thank you for uh, watching the videos. Like I say, I, I'm still very grateful because I didn't expect it to go this well. But it gives an insight to people that are out there that are in the HGV industry and not in the HGV industry. Um, you know, and I get a lot of feedback off a lot of good people as well. It's like Dino, you know, keep your stuff coming, pal. You, you seem to drop on and off like a bloody yo yo. Your comments are great, same as a lot of other people's. Uh, but yeah, keep them coming. Right, I, I am going to leave it there because I'm just waffling crap uh, and your son gets sick of it. So I will see you in the next one. And until the next one, please do take care, do take it easy. Enjoy your family life, your home life, your hobbies, or whatever you do.